I'm Christopher Graves with the Ogilvy Center for Behavioral Science, and here's an update on our groundbreaking research approach we like to call the hidden who. Now, this was co-invented by myself and John Poulston at Kantar Profiles, the giant research company. In essence, what it does is bring some new lenses to decode individuals at scale. And we're very grateful that over the past few years, we've won six global awards for this approach. And it's really about uncovering a kind of sense-making genome. That is the innate building blocks of personality traits and other aspects of cognitive styles that guide, distort, filter, and ultimately lead us to preferences, choices, and behaviors. Let's take a look at just a few of the dozens that we test for. The first is personality trait factors. You may be familiar with that as big five or five factor or ocean. And they're very key in ranging from everything from health to financial to being able to predict behaviors based on correlations between these traits and those behaviors, preferences, and choices. The next one in the top center is something called cultural cognition. It's really our identity tied worldviews that either bind us into an in-group or can split us as you see in the culture wars in the United States these days. We also look at things like religiosity, regulatory focus, locus of control, moral foundations theory, time perspective, and need for affect. Now, Together, we hope that this gives us a much sharper picture of why people react to what they do and perhaps even help us predict more success with interventions, for example, for health and healthier outcomes related to vaccines. And to test this recently, we partnered with Nudgestock supporter Instapanel. And they gave us a panel of 50 respondents who not only took our modified profiler test, but also gave us some video inputs as well. And we provoked or stimulated some of those with videos of our own. In this case, these are public service announcements that Ogilvy made for the city of Chicago Department of Public Health, looking to overcome vaccine hesitancy in specific groups. So in this first instance, we're looking at two doctors, each with a different version of a public service announcement. Let's look at each of the two videos and then see how the panelists reacted. The COVID-19 vaccine for five to 11 year olds contains one third of the adult dose. Over 8 million children have already received the COVID-19 vaccine in looking at these two public service announcements head to head, the first one was about dosage because dosage for children was a cause of vaccine hesitancy among some parents. They just worried that maybe this would overpower their tiny systems. The second one was about social norm. And when we played them and tested them head to head in this pairing, there actually was a clear winner. The social norm was chosen as the preferred message to perhaps motivate parents to vaccinate their children. Now let's look at a second pairing. In this case, we have Dr. Joy and a young child named Bryn. Now, Dr. Joy's message and Bryn's message are quite different. Dr. Joy's message is more of that cognitive analytical message whereas Bryn is bubbling over with enthusiasm in just a short video. Let's take a look at the two videos. The COVID-19 vaccine for five to 11 year olds contains one third of the adult dose. My name's Bryn and I'm six. I'm vaccinated. And now let's look at the two videos from two respondents from Instapanel. So the video that Dr. Joy, um, I'm more interested into that one. And the reason why is because it gives me more insight as of what the vaccine contains. It tells me it's one third of the adult vaccine. 
um, and that's more interested, interesting for me because then I'll think about it. Okay, well, let me think about it. Let me do my own research, um, and then I'll decide if I want to get my kids vaccinated or not. Also, um, looking at a video with a doctor instead of a kid, then it, I'll think about it more. And the reason why is because you're trying to reach your parents' audience instead of the kid video. Uh, I'm sorry, the video where the little girl was on the video explaining that she was vaccinated. Uh, I would be more opposed to um, that's not something I would be interested in. I'd rather hear a doctor's opinion or someone that already got their kids vaccinated of how their procedure went. What was the kid's reaction to it? When you're targeting children to be vaccinated and you see kids interacting and being healthy and being happy as far as getting vaccinated, I feel like that's going to encourage more children to want to get vaccinated and encourage parents to want to get vac to vaccinate their children as well. Now let's look at how the panelists reacted. And if you looked at this from a traditional research point of view, you might say this is kind of an even split between the message from Dr. Joy on the one hand, that cognitive message, and that ebullient affect message from the child, Bryn. But when you dig down into the hidden who, you begin to see how different the people and their reactions really are. This leads us to a completely different form of segmentation, way beyond demographics, into these inner wirings of the sense-making genome. If you looked at Dr. Joy and you thought about what kind of persona versus those who like Bryn, you can see here how they break out to be very different, whether it's regulatory focus, prevention on the one hand, promotion on the other, locus of control, internal preference versus external, and then religiosity, and even comprehensive thinking styles about whether somebody puts their beliefs over facts or facts over beliefs. These are not the building blocks of traditional persona building, but they should be now. Let's look at another area called cultural cognition. This is tracking and mapping individual worldviews. And in the case of vaccines, we've been testing for decades about how an individualistic worldview might be different from a communitarian worldview or a collectivist worldview when it comes to vaccines. For example, herd immunity. An individualist is not that concerned about other people or an entire group of people, whereas the communitarian is very much concerned with herd immunity and especially protecting the most vulnerable. Again, we go to our Insta panel panelist reaction videos. I believe that as I wouldn't want any other parent to tell me what to do with my child, uh, so am I not in the position to actually give or say what other people are doing with, with their lives. Uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's none of my business and I don't even really care. Why parents should vaccinate their children, you're protecting them. It's a short-term pain for a long-term gain. Uh, you're protecting them, you're protecting your own family, you're protecting their classmates, their friends, their teachers, their bus driver, their dance teachers, their swim teachers, their soccer coaches. By getting your kid vaccinated, you're protecting not just them, but everybody else. So you can see the individualist panelist versus the communitarian panelist in their own words on the video from Instapanel, how different they may be. And this becomes really important as building blocks to segmentation and personas, whether it's health or finance or consumer goods. Recommend it strongly that you begin looking at this hidden who in its set of behavioral science-based tests 
and components. So when you think about pulling it all together on a sense-making genome for vaccine hesitancy, look at the things we test that go way beyond stated preferences and demographics. We looked at the personality trait profiles. And again, when you look at hesitancy, you'll find something like this here, where a bit higher in neuroticism, perhaps. When you look at the cultural cognition or worldview, we found more hesitancy amongst those who preferred more of a hierarchical worldview and those who were more individualistic. We found a very strong correlation between self-reported high levels of religiosity and vaccine hesitancy. When it comes to locus of control, those who exhibited much more of a external locus of control were more hesitant. And when we look at moral foundations, we found that those especially who tested high on loyalty, authority, and purity were much more hesitant. When it comes to regulatory focus, those with a promotion focus were much more hesitant than those with a prevention focus. And in terms of time perspective, well, those in the present were more hesitant than those who were worried about future consequences, for example. On need for affect test, we saw those who avoid emotion as opposed to approaching emotion, those who avoid emotion were much more hesitant when it came to vaccines. And on the comprehensive thinking style and cognitive reflection tests, those scoring low on a cognitive reflection test and those who were putting beliefs over facts were much more hesitant. So when we put it all together, it is really an exciting approach to developing a sense-making genome. And we're really proud to share it with you in Nudgestock 10. Thanks a lot. Just one favor. If you want to keep Nudgestock free, click the like button because the algorithm likes it and click the subscribe button too. The algorithm likes that and unlike the like button, it's actually useful because you'll get notified of future content from Nudgestock whenever it becomes available.